So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, my name's Arshilahi, and tonight what we're doing is that we've got a very special uh, presentation for this evening. We're going to be online for approximately 90 minutes, and what we're going to be talking about, how you can, well, it depends on the terminology that you want to call it. It could be deal sourcing, could be deal trading, it could be deal packaging, whatever you want to call it. I prefer to call it deal trading, and what we're going to be talking about, how deal trading can be made easy with me, Arshilahi. So, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for being online with me this evening because I appreciate it. Sunday evening. You could be doing lots of things, spending it with your family. You could be working on your goals and your plans for the following week. But in instead, you've decided to invest some time with me. And I promise that the next 90 minutes is going to be the most precious commodity. And I guarantee that that's the best investment that you're going to make. So, as I said to some of the guys on social media, we are live on Facebook, we are live on Instagram, we are live on YouTube. And for everyone that is watching on social media, we are on live for 15 minutes on social media. After that, if you want to catch the whole 90-minute session, you will have to come live onto the webinar. Now, if you're interested in deal trading and if you're interested in deal sourcing, deal packaging, whatever you want to call it, I wrote a 55-page booklet called No Money Down Property Investing. If you'd like a copy of that, all you have to do is share this video. If you're on the webinar, guess what, guys? Fantastic, because you're already going to get a copy of it, and I'll get Christina or one of my assistants to send it out to you this week. So, so what are we going to be learning in the next 90 minutes? So, first of all, we're going to be looking at the simple three-step deal trading system that I've been using for the last 14 years. So it's not something that I've just started yesterday. I've got really excited about I'm teaching you about it today. It's seen the test of time. It's been through recessions. It's been through the boom and the bust, and it's still here to tell the tale. Uh, it's a system that I use, which I call the three-step three step system, where it can allow you to trade at least a deal a month. And as a result, if you've traded 12 deals a year, you can make on average, £60,000 on part-time hours. And admittedly, this strategy that we're going to be talking about allows you to trade five different types of property that you could source to open a wealth of opportunity. Now, that is admittedly quite an outrageous claim. So what is it? So what is it? So there's lots of people out there that are doing fantastic things on property, and hopefully tonight we're going to be talking about quite a few of the strategies out there and how this strategy in particular can help you along your property journey. So why should you listen to me? Who is Arshil Arkin? Well, first of all, I'm very proud when I say this, is that I'm um, a columnist. I've been a columnist for five years in a property magazine called Your Property Network. I'm also a columnist in the HMO magazine, so I've been doing that for nearly, I can't remember, maybe a year, maybe two years. I was actually featured on a Channel 4 programme called Britain's Benefit Tenants. Uh, I've been Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, running for the British Muslim Awards. I've been Entrepreneur of the Year for um, Natural Awards uh, 2018. And I'm a regular speaker at multiple networking events across the UK. So that gives you a bit of a background as to who I am and what I do. So uh, more importantly, uh, something that I'm very, very proud of. So if you don't know anything about me, I'm the proud author of a book called Boom Buster Back Again. So I've called it the Property Survival Guide. Yes, I have a Property Investor Survival Guide. So if you've never read it, you've never heard it, uh, you can find it on Amazon. And the beautiful thing with my book is that all the proceeds go to charity. So I've self-funded the whole thing and all the proceeds go to cancer charities. And that is just my way of giving back, saying thank you to the property community. So uh, I'm... I could say I'm an 18 year old, well, 18 year property veteran who was earned his scars. And as the book suggests, boom, bust, and back again. It's never always been an easy journey. You know, we've seen some good times, we've seen some bad times, and we're back to tell the tale. So it is a property investor's survival guide. And I'll be talking about how I started deal trading business on basic savings and made in excess of £6 million profit in just under three years. So these are outrageous claims, but guess what, guys? All in the book. All in the book. So more, more importantly, I'm a property investor trainer and a mentor that's helped hundreds of people achieve financial freedom. And remember what I said, guys. 
uh, especially for the guys on the webinar, especially for the guys listening on social media. If you want a copy of my 55-page booklet called No Money Down Property Investing, all you have to do is share the video. So all you gotta do is click share, and as a result, we'll get you a copy of that sent out to you. So what is deal trading? The way that I, I try and keep things, well, if, for those that know me, I'm quite a simple guy. When I say simple guy, that I like to keep things simple. If it's simple, I like doing it. If it's not complicated or if it becomes too complex, I think, you know what, have I really got the time for this? And I think, mm, maybe, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. And as a result, that kind of gets put on the back burner. So the strategy we're going to be talking about is deal trading. Now, what is deal trading? The way that I like to simplify it or the way that I like to look at it is I'm, in essence, an estate agency exclusively for property investors. Now, let me simplify that even further. If you're looking to buy property and you're looking to buy property to move in yourself, where would you go to? Generally speaking, you'd go to somewhere like Right Move, Zoopla, on the market, uh, some of the property portals, and as a result, uh, you'd start looking on there. Now, let's face it, right moving that, they don't kind of advertise, or they don't advertise in big bold letters, investment. So as a result, you could be looking at it and think, eh, eh, eh. so as a result, you know, us as property traders, what we tend to do is we tend to put a spotlight on a property that we think has got some form of investment angle. And as a result, we then sell it on to, in essence, we can call ourselves a middleman. Uh, we can call ourselves a middleman where we pr pretty much negotiate a deal with a vendor, we package it together, which is pretty much like what an estate agency do, we would advertise it, and as a result, we then sell it on to an investor as opposed to a homeowner. Well, we do get people that buy off us who are homeowners, so uh, quite a few people in the social media are saying, guys, share, 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 that'd be fantastic. If you can tell me that you've shared it, that'd be fantastic, and then tomorrow or even tonight, depending on what time we finish, we will uh, get you that document out. So again, just a final reminder, I've got a 55 page document called the No Money Down Property Investment Guide. And if you want a copy of it, all you gotta do is share this video. So what is deal trading? It's a simplified system where you help homeowners that have been let down by high street estate agents because their house doesn't sell itself. You sell the deal onto a property investor that wants to build a portfolio. Now, if you're watching this, chances are that you're interested in property. There's also a chance that you may be being nosy and just seeing what the bloody hell am I getting up to on a Sunday evening. And that's great as well. That's fine. Uh, but if you're involved, if, if you're interested in property, potentially you're always looking for your next deal. And that deal may look to you in lots of different forms. It may come in the form of that you want to buy something below market value. It may be that you're looking for your next cash flow model. Maybe that you're looking for your next HMO. Maybe that you're looking for your next service accommodation deal. Maybe that you're looking for your next rent to rent deal. Maybe that you're looking for your next lease option deal. Maybe that look you're looking for your next development deal. The beautiful thing with deal sourcing and deal trading, it gives you the opportunity to look at every single strategy. Now, one thing that I should make clear is that sometimes you can become a jack of all trades and master of none. So that is my disclaimer, shall we say. And the one thing that you've got to say, uh, for the guys on Instagram, say hi, hey, how are you? Um, so why is deal trading so important? The beautiful thing with deal trading, very simple. You can invest in property without buying a house, which means no deposit, no experience, no problem. Sounds too good to be true so far. If it, if it sounds too good to be true, you know, stick your hands up and go, Osh, you know, this is a load of crap. You know, as far as I'm concerned, no chance. I, I'm cool with that, you know. I And the reason why I say that is because I've been doing this 18 years. It's not something that I thought of in my sleep last night. I thought, oh, I'm going to run a, I'm gonna run a workshop on deal trading. I'm going to run a webinar on deal trading because it's something completely new. This is not new. In essence, we are a glorified form of an estate agent. Don't care how you package it up. I don't care how anyone else tries to say it. That's exactly what we are. We are glorified estate agents. It works. And Andy, and Andy Watkins says it works. The beautiful thing with deal trading is that, now some people, and me included, um, I use deal trading as a different source of a cash flow model. So I've already got, 
uh, a decent sized property portfolio. And I, I'm fine with that. And, you know, I deal with all the trials and tribulations that come with that, like for argument's sake, dealing with tenants, dealing with councils, dealing with, uh, dealing with tenants, dealing with council, dealing with rent, dealing with uh, housing benefit, dealing with working tenants, dealing with students, dealing with professionals, dealing with maintenance men, sometimes dealing with letting agents. And, you know, to be fair, it is great. And I'm very grateful for everything that we do. However, on the other side, the beautiful thing about deal trading is that I don't deal with any of them. The only thing that I deal with, so there's no tenants. And the beautiful thing that I like with deal trading, and lots of people use this, um, the one thing that I really like is the fact that I can do this from the comfort of my mobile phone and my laptop. Well, I don't really need a laptop if I don't want to use a laptop, but I, I can do everything off my mobile phone. I find it easier working off a laptop, but that's just me. And more importantly, I can do it from anywhere in the world. So I'm not confined to my desk. I'm not confined. And if you speak to my, if you speak to my assistant, she says that uh, she'll tell you that I hate being confined to a desk. I hate being confined to an office. And that's why deal trading really works well for me. I don't. I've got you know. I've got ants in my pants. So hey, Callie. Hey, James. How are you? So the beautiful thing about deal trading and why it's so important. This is the ultimate freedom strategy. It is the ultimate no excuses strategy. The only thing at time it, it requires is your time and your determination. And let's face it, guys, if you're on this webinar, you're on this webinar for a specific reason because you're interested about deal trading, deal sourcing, deal packaging, and whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So as a deal trader, your role is very simply to find landlords, homeowners that are struggling to either sell their property or lease their property or rent their property and offer them a unique solution. Now, I, don't, I try not to call ourselves deal traders, deal sources, deal packages. I like to call ourselves problem solvers. And the reason being is that somewhere along the line, that person has got a issue or a problem which requires some form of, uh, which requires some form of solution. As a result, now you being the creative person you are, you being the entrepreneur that you are, you then, find the solution and as a result if we can package it in a manner where we can then sell the deal onto another property investor you make a fee now let's take this a step back the state agency model what do estate agents do someone approaches them and let's just use let's say for argument's sake let's use connell's which is a national brand so mr connell's they walk in they say mr connell's i need to sell my house Mr. Connell said, great, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to come and take some photos, we're going to put it online, and as a result, we're going to shine a spotlight on it, we're going to uh, get it on Rightmove, we're going to get it on Zoopla, we're going to get it on the market, and as a result, we're going to get a floodload of people looking at it, and hopefully we're going to arrange some viewings, as a result, we're going to sell it, as a result of us selling it, we're going to charge you a commission of whatever you've sold it for, let's, so let's keep numbers simple, if we are if we sold it for £100,000, we're going to charge you 2% plus fat, which is £2,400, you're going to be happy because you've sold your house and you can go off and do other things. We're going to be happy because we've made money from a property that we do not own and we have simply controlled and transacted for a short period of time. And the buyer's going to be happy because they've now got a fantastic deal or a property that they can either move into, live in, whatever they may be, and everyone's happy. There's three people in the transaction. And that is no different to deal sourcing or deal trading, deal packaging, or whatever you want to call it. Does that make sense so far? Have I lost anyone in the process? So I've said very simply what a deal trader does. Now, one thing that we are going to do, guys, is we're going to bring the social media. So if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to bring this down to a close. Now, in the comment section, Christina has actually put the link to the whole session. We're going to be online for 90 minutes. So if you like what you've heard so far and you want to get involved in the rest of the content, now is the perfect time to click. Now, the other thing I'm going to say to you is that if you want to get access to my 55 page document on no money down property investing, you also need to share this video. So, and if you can put shared and uh, over this evening or tomorrow, we'll be in contact. We'll need to get some details from you. As a result, we will then get that document at you. So guys, we're gonna finish the social feed. Hopefully you've enjoyed the session so far and I look forward to seeing you on the webinar shortly. Thank you.
So guys, thank you very much for staying with me. So we're on, we're only live on the webinar now. So fantastic, which makes it a little bit easier for me because I don't then don't have to start looking in three different places. Fantastic. So does everyone on the webinar now get the gist of what a deal trader does? Yeah, feel free. Ask questions. You know, ask questions. Put them along. Put them in. What I've tried to do is I've tried to simplify it so that you get a good indication as to what a deal trader does. You've got the simple and the basics as to exactly what it does. So we've got Michael Odidina uh, online. Uh, I may bring Michael, I didn't realize that Michael was online. I may bring him online because I've been working with Michael for a few months and Michael, as a result, I would call a deal trader because he traded seven properties between, so far, between June and, uh, where, where are we now, October. So as a result, within a very short space of time, he has traded property. Now, the beautiful thing with deal trading is point number three. You make property cash flow without buying a house. And I can't emphasize that enough. There's no gimmick here. Like, it's not like Frank and said, all you have to, all we have to do is find a landlord or a homeowner. We have to negotiate it. And we'll, the three step system that we're going to be talking about in a second is source, package, and sell. And so let's get moving on. So, why is being a property sourcer such an important skill to have? Well, first of all, now let's think about this logically. Now, some of you guys, I'm hoping that the majority of you guys would have seen some of the deals that we put out on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so Rob has just come and goes, hi, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, so I've just arrived late. It's a deal sourcer, a uh, deal trader, a sourcer. That's exactly what it is. Like I said, deal sourcer, deal trader, deal packager, they're all kind of the same thing. Depends on what you like calling yourself. Um, so being a property sourcer, it's, it's such an important skill to have because, let's face it, and wherever you are in your property journey, whether you're completely new to property, whether you're a, a complete experienced campaigner, if you're starting out, you're trying to find that perfect first investment. If you're already a property investor, you're now le looking for your next great deal or your next uh, investment deal, whether it be a development deal, etc. Now, more importantly, if you're on this webinar, chances are you've probably already received the emails that we send out on a day-by-day -day basis. Would you agree? Now, if it wasn't for my email, how else would a property investor in London get to know about the potential great deal that you may receive on email in Manchester? Let's face it, they're not necessarily going to be looking from London in Manchester. Chances are they've probably never even considered Manchester before. They thought, well, I'm investing in London, in London, and London only. Now, I say to them, guys, okay, here's a 30% below market value opportunity in Manchester. And they think, oh, I never really thought about looking at Manchester before. And before you know it, they think, hang on, I'm actually getting more bricks and mortar for my money. And as a result, I'm getting a better deal in Manchester than I am in London. I'm actually making cash flow. I may not be making capital growth, but I'm making cash flow, which is what generally is a deal which everyone wants. How else would agents be able to sell their hard to sell properties? Now you've got to remember that you guys think about this carefully. You guys as investors take calculated risks, unlike homeowners. Now just imagine that there's a two bedroom terrace house. Let's just, I don't know, let's say Liverpool for argument's sake. It's completely stripped back, you know, the the boiler's been ripped out, the radiator's missing, there's some wiring or missing. Now, if they're, if a homeowner was to look at that and think, ooh, not so sure about that, you know, I'm, I've just about got enough money to buy the house, but I haven't got the money to refurb the property, especially having put, uh, put in a brand new central heating system. So, they, generally speaking, homeowners are after places that can they can literally pick up their clothes and move into. Investors take calculated risks and who are sim you know and we can we can see the vision we are very creative in our approach more importantly how would distressed sellers be able to solve their problems without us as problem solvers now just to give me an example when a estate agent walks through the door and then i you know i've got to make it very clear i'm not against estate agents i actually work very closely with estate agents now just imagine that there's 
uh, Connaught or your uh, your move or you know Reed Trains or one of the large corporations so go in and they said okay Mr homeowner yeah I see your property how many times does the agent actually get to sit down and talk to the vendor and get to know the personal circumstances I would pretty much say none all they're looking at is the bricks and mortar okay the house is worth approximately 100 grand we can put it on for 105 with a view of achieving 100,000 that's what they're after they're looking at pretty much what their commission structure is so on the basis that we sell it 100,000 we're going to make approximately 2% plus fat and um, as a result yeah uh, I can see how this is going to work now us as property investors we look at it in deep down okay we understand that the house is worth 100,000 pounds but okay before you know before we go into that what's the circumstances behind selling it and that is a key thing. Now, one thing that we're going to be talking about, hopefully shortly, is, I can't remember if I've actually put this in the slide, a little thing that I uh, push on every day is called pain and motivation. Um, now, moving on. If you think, or I don't mind, this is a very open-ended question. Do you think that there are any deals in your area? I hear it all the time. Oh, there are no deals in my area. It's impossible to find below market value, value deals in my area. I live in London. No one sells their property below market value. The one thing that you've got to think about, guys, is that they do sell property below market value in London. And if you've been on my email list, we've been sending out stuff between 10, 15, maybe even 20% below market value. I think we put something out in Islington recently that was circa 30% below market value. We get rent to rent deals in uh, London. We get lease options in deals. We get you know all kinds of deals in all different locations. And we cover pretty much the length and the breadth of the country. And that's the beautiful thing about deal sourcing is that you can source across the entire country. Now, the beautiful thing that I love is that the fact that one day I could be talking about property in Liverpool, tomorrow I could be talking about property down in Bournemouth, tomorrow, the day after I could be talking about something in London, the day after that I could be talking about something in Scotland. And you can trade deals you haven't personally seen, and I'll show you how. Now, that sounds extremely... Now, you've got to remember, last year, uh, as I said in one of my marketing emails, last year we traded... 483 deals now when we say 483 deals if you don't believe me and the one thing that i am very good at is showing you proof go back into your email inbox and type in arsh see how many emails i sent you see how many deals that i send you on average i send out approximately two deals a day on average there's some day deals that i send one but 99% of the chance, well, I'd say pretty much 99% of the time we send out at least one a day, sometimes two, sometimes we send out three, sometimes we even send out a deal, uh, an email that's got six or seven properties on, which is showing you the kind of level of activity that we're getting. And you can trade deals all over the country. And you've got to remember that, is it possible for me personally to go and view all these properties? It is physically impossible. But yet we get people to do that because I haven't got the time to trade into, walk into 483 properties, photo them, get all the info and get it uploaded. That's the fact. So what are the different types of deals? Now, if you're looking for... If you're looking at only one specific kind of deal, so for argument's sake, someone may say, someone may say, well, I'm only going to look for deals that are 25% below market value. You're going to struggle and you're going to suffer. When you start to look at it from, now, I'm going to give you a little tip, guys. I went on a speed awareness course. Uh, we're talking many years ago. And it's probably one of the most eye-opening things that I've ever been on. And when he said to me, uh, you have to just imagine what I'm doing now. So he said, you cannot, no, I t um, he goes, you've got two things that you can do. You can either drive down the road and you can only look at things in front of you, right in front of you. And that's called tunnel vision. And you're only seeing things that are directly in front of you. However, if you adapt your driving skill 
to something which is called funnel vision, you will start to see everything that is happening around you. So instead of looking straight in front of you, you're now starting to see, and if I put it in driving context, if you're only looking in front of you, you're only going to see the car in front and possibly potentially the rest of the, uh, just everything that's happening in front of you. Now, if you use, uh, if you adopt the funnel vision, you're then going to start to see that little child that's playing over there that you need to potentially take, uh, pay attention to because he's playing football very close to the road. A person's potentially looking to cross the road over there. You know, uh, there's all kinds of things that you start to pay. And I start to adapt it and say, oh, okay, that house is for sale over there. That property is for let over there. There's a body of house over there. There's a direct piece of land over there. So I adapted it a little bit further for my property strategy. And as a result, I started to look at all different kinds of deals. Traders that struggle to find deals every month are the one trick ponies that only look for below market value deals. They struggle and they suffer through the same frustration because they don't know how to source five different types of deals. Now, here we go. These guys, uh, you know, if you if you grew up in the 80s, you'll know these guys. So we've got Delbo and Rodney from Only Falls and Horses. And I love, I love this program. I still watch it today, you know, in that respect, because as a deal trader, you have to you have to be able to pick up the phone, write letters, speak to vendors, speak to agents, and everyone. And as a result, you don't you, you know, you don't necessarily have to be the best negotiator. What you have to do, you, what you have to become is the best listener. I once heard, and this stuck with me, you learn nothing from talking. You don't actually learn anything from talking. You learn everything from listening. And I adopted that in great detail. So when I walk into an investor, or when I walk into a property, I'm literally sitting there and listening, listening to everything that they've got to say. I make notes along the way, and at some point, there's going to be something where they say, you know what, boom. And that's where I look at and I think, that's the pain, that's the motivation, that's the reason for sale. As a result, they tell me what the problem is, I find a solution for it, and as a result, we then start to move on and said, okay, I now understand what the issue is. I think we've got a solution for it. And this is how everyone, providing that we all work together, we make some money. Now, the reason why I put this picture up is because with deal sourcing, if you adopt it into your everywhere, everyday form of life, you will be surprised at the things that you can source. Now, just to give you an example, I woke up this morning, I think it's about six o'clock, but the clocks have gone back. So re in reality, it's around seven o'clock old time, six o'clock new time. I was going on Facebook and I was in one of the groups and someone said, I've got this old Golf GTI Mark II. It was an E-Reg, so it's not this specific model, just so that you know. It's not this specific car. It's one that's beaten up. And I thought, oh, OK. I used to remember those when I was growing up as a kid. Now, my brother had a bit of a love for cars. He still does. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. So I messaged him. I said, what are you after for it? And he goes, if someone's prepared to take it off me as it is, I will accept a thousand pounds. If I've got to do some work on it and to get it up to running standard, I'm going to accept 1600 pounds. Now I did a bit of research on it and all singing, all dancing, worst case scenario, I thought this car was worth circa five grand. And I looked at it and said, okay, and I said, uh, and I message, and this was on Facebook. So I said, I messaged him back. And I said, okay, what are you selling it? He goes, that it's been sat on my drive for years. I've been meaning to get around to it. I'm an extremely busy guy. My wife's doing my head in. Um, you know, I could do with the cash. We've got a baby on the way. And I said, boom, okay. And this was all the stuff that he was telling me on Messenger. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. I said, where are you based? He said, I'm based in Stoke. So he's not a million miles away from me. Uh, and I, was, I arranged to go and view it during the week. Uh, and he go, and I said to him, you know, I don't normally do this, by the way. I don't normally get to the figures. And I said, is there a deal to be done if I if I come down and I like it and I, I want to take it away? If I come down with some guys that can uh, stick it on the back of their truck, he goes, if you're paying cash, then I'm yeah, I'm always up for negotiating. So straight away, at a grand, I'm comfortable. If I can get it for circa, you know, between 
between six and seven hundred pounds i think then i've got someone that restores these kind of cars as a result by spending the best part of 1500 pounds on it uh which is i've sent all the pictures over to this guy he goes yeah i think we can get it done within around 1500 quid so it's going to cost me around between two and two and a half grand and we're going to sell it for five grand now it's i know we've gone completely off topic by the way uh but we source this i source this literally by finding something and i listen to the guy's pain i listen to his motivation he's telling me about his kids telling me about his family he's telling me that it's been sat there he's telling me that he needs the money and as a result i think that we've done a deal there so we can adapt it to every way shape and form of life so it doesn't just have to be property so what is a deal a deal is buying something for potentially less than it's worth which then leads to two questions how do you measure the market value of a house and more importantly why would someone sell me their house cheap which are two very uh, two very valid questions now you've got to remember um uh, measuring the measuring the market value of a property is very simple we've got all these different kind of platforms that we can use on a day-by-day -day basis. So for argument's sake, we've got comparison tools, we've got property B, we've got right move, we've got Zoopla. And what we the one thing that I would always suggest to you is that you pick up the phone to agents and let's say, guys, okay, I'm looking at a house, it's a three-bed mid-terrace house on this street in this area. Have you sold something in that location? Um and they say, yeah, okay, well, um, I've, I've got something in this location. I always ask the question, so how much is it on the market for? How long has it been on for? How many viewings have you had? How many offers have you had? Um, and if it hasn't sold, what, why, you know, from your personal and professional opinion, why isn't it sold? And, and they'll probably say, oh, you know, if it's up to us, I, I reckon I'd prefer to have it five grand less, which would make it a little bit more attractive in that location. And they will tell you stuff like that. And if they say, well, we've had quite a few, uh, it's been quite an interesting property, or we've had quite a few viewings, the vendor hasn't gave us viewing access, or he goes, uh, uh, the vendor is very adamant that he wants £99,950. We've had an offer of 99000 and it was rejected. So they will tell you all these kind of things. Now, why would someone sell their house cheap? Now, the one thing I will say is that, as I put in the emails as well, Price is not always the motivating factor. Now, I had one of my mentees in with me this week, and she's predominantly after rent to rent properties. And she goes, Oh, she goes, This guy's asking $16.50 for it, and it's a house, uh, uh, it's close to Croydon. I can't remember the area, it's in, uh, close to Croydon. Uh, she goes, This guy wants $16.50 a month for it. And she goes, I can't make it work at $16.50. I said, the price at this point is irrelevant because what they want and what they will achieve or what they're after are two completely different things. What we need to figure out is really what the real problem or let's get to the root of the issue. So for I'm going to say straight, straightforward with rent to rent, why is the house empty? You know, how long has it been empty? And as a result, we can start to figure out how much pain is that landlord actually in? He's got if he's got a house that is uh, you know empty and it's been costing him sixteen fifty a month, and he's got a mortgage of a thousand pounds a month and it's been empty two months. Let's face it, guys, he's lost two grand worth of income. Um, he's, he's lost two grand by mortgage payments straight away, and you know that is no secret. You can calculate that very simply. So. What we're going to be doing is the one thing I'm going to show you is how to use the deal trading system. But the one thing that I've got to remind you is that there's two things that you have to transform your life with property cash flow. You need knowledge and action. I can give you all the knowledge, but you will need to take the action. I've shown hundreds of people this simple deal trading system. And there's one thing that separates those that are su successful and those that aren't. And it's knowing why they are doing this. Because let's face it, we all have bad days. We all have days when we want to quit. Those that succeed choose what they want most over what they want now. It is a reason why that makes it easy for them to choose what they want most on a consistent basis. Does that make sense, guys? 
So the one thing that I want you to do is I want you to, if you can, in the comments box, write down what is your reason why. My reason why is to love what I do. My reason why is to love where I do it. My reason why is to love who I do it with. And my reason why is to love who I do it for. And you've got to remember what, where, who, and for. They're my, they're my reasons why. Now, for the guys that are listening on the webinar, just type into the box, what is your reason why? Why is it that you get, what is it that gets you or motivates you to get out of bed every morning? Who do you do it for? Why do you do it? Where are you doing it? So, okay, so as I'm straight away, he goes, I'm doing it for a new challenge. Tal says, I'm doing it for my kids. Carolina says, I'm doing it for my daughter and my family. Uh, sorry, I'm not hopeful of pronouncing this right. Kaya says, financial freedom. My Emran says, my wife, providing a better life for my family. Kids. So people coming in, kids, to enjoy my life, family, secure my family's future, financial freedom, leads to more time with my family. Chi, doing it for my family, also to go on holidays. So there's lots of reasons why. So the, the underlying factor is that you're doing it for your family, you're doing it for your security, you're doing it, you know, so that you can provide a better family for all the people above. So freedom, freedom is a very generic one because by by doing it successfully and generating income, income, you're already buying yourself time, which is buying in freedom. And what you decide to do with that time is completely up to you. And so Victor says, the promise of my family being free. And that's fantastic, you know, and, and I may, I mention this all the time, is that I've got a very young family. So my, my kids are three and five years old. So two, I've got two very young daughters. And the reason why I do it is that I've got a wife and two children. I do it for them. So regardless of where I am or what I do, so it's, it's lots of people ask, so ask you goes, you've already got a portfolio. Why are you doing this? I do it because I believe I can do more. I believe that I'm still too young to retire. I still believe I'd be extremely bored if I gave up. So I love the thought of deal trading because it gives, it provides a fast environment. One minute I'm negotiating, one minute I'm selling, and it's a fantastic environment to be in. So that's my reason why. It gives me a sense of purpose as well. Your reason why has to be specific. If you want financial freedom, you've got to ask yourself, how much money will you need? When do you need? Uh, when do you want this? So, for instance, say you know, I, I always suggest that you put it into a time frame. So, where do you see yourself being in a year's time? Where do you see yourself? Uh, where do you see yourself in a year's time? Where do you see yourself in three years' time? Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Where do you see yourself in ten years' time? Yeah, and the, these are the questions that you you got to ask. Now, the three-step process that we're going to be talking about is source, package, and sell, SPS. And, you know, I, I keep things extremely simple. Now, step one is very simple. You've got to find a deal. Remember, well, the way that I've worked on this for the last 18 years is that there are 21 different sourcing techniques that I use on a regular basis. Now, admittedly, we don't have time to go through all of them tonight. And more importantly, if I went through 21 methods, you wouldn't remember more than approximately three. So what we're going to do, we're going to concentrate on a couple. And I'm sure that you only want to know which one's the best. Now, the fastest, easiest and cheapest way to get started is by speaking to estate agents. Now, some of you are going to turn around and say, bloody heck, okay, I'm on a webinar and he's telling me to speak to estate agents. But guess what, guys? Providing that you treat these guys well, they can become your cheapest and easiest way to get started. And the reason why I say that is because, let's face it, I've used this term, why do you rob banks? It's because that's where the money is. That's what Willie Sutton said. 90% of all properties are sold through estate agents. So why don't we make our life easy and go where the properties are already sold or, or go where properties are already being listed and ready to be sold? Now, people say to me, Arsh, I can't find motivated buyers. Now, guys, can I give you a quick 
quick quick demonstration. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to right now. Does someone want to give me an area? Just so that you guys can see Manchester. Okay, so someone's coming to Manchester, someone's coming to Newcastle. So someone's coming straight away, Manchester. So let's just go great Greater Manchester. Now I put in Greater Manchester. And in within Greater Manchester, the one thing that I would say, Jerome, Manchester is a massive area. If I was you, I would focus on, for arguments, I'm going to give you a little tip. So here we go. I'm going to edit the search here. That is the whole of Manchester. Now, the beautiful thing with Rightmove is that you could actually make this, according, you could edit this map according to wherever you wanted. So for arguments say, if you only wanted to choose Eccles, for arguments say, you could bring everything in so that you would only concentrate on everything to do with Eccles. I don't have time to actually go through all that. Um, so for arguments say, you could bring it all in so that it's only concentrating on, on areas around Eccles. And as a result, we view the properties, we change it again, they're all the properties within within a certain area of Eccles around there. And if you start clicking on all these, it tells you all the different kinds of properties straight away. You know, now the question is that I'm going to say to you is uh, let's exit the map. So we've gone back now. We've now gone down to 5,654 because we've broken down some of the areas. Now, a question from uh, your point of view. Out of these, how many do you believe are motivated? So think about it. So, okay, so Don says 5%. Tal said 100. Someone said 15%. I'm not going to take your answer, Michael. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to take your answer, Chi, because you guys know this because you've been working with me. So, Zishan says the ones listed for the longest time, potentially 10%, 20%. Should tell you, should let you into all the answers. Uh, all the answers that I've read out so far are all wrong. If they're listed for sale, they've got a reason for being on sale. Does that make sense? So in that respect, you can, you know, from it said, these aren't new tools, by the way, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying, not trying to tell you how to suck eggs. So you can structure it from lowest price. You can structure it from highest price. You can, if, as someone said, you can list it from oldest listing. You know, so this one came on in 2015. Now, if this guy isn't motivated, I don't know what is. You know, this guy's been listed for near enough three years. Now, for you to find this guy would be relatively easy. You could literally, you know, get hold of him on uh, from, let's say, a land registry or find out who owns it very simply by spending £3 on a land registry search. Again, this guy's been on the market for two years. Do you not reckon at this point he's a little bit miffed with his agent? You know, let's just say that Bridgeford have had it for nearly two years. They haven't sold it. Now, from an agent's point of view, if you came into them, and you said, guys, okay, uh, my name, let's uh, let's just use an example. My name's Bath. I'm a property, you know, I'm a property investor. Um, I'm I'm not the person that's going to buy your property, but I've got other people that may be interested in this property. I understand it's been on for nearly two years. Uh, I think I might have someone that might be interested. Would that, you know, if we were to work together, how how would that sound to you? So uh, Rob's coming, but the estate agent will be motivated to sell at the market price. Possibly, possibly not Rob, but again, in the same respect, sometimes you can add value to the property as opposed to try and go in and use price as your motivating factor. You might be thinking it's possible, impossible to find deals through estate agents, but estate agents actually need your help to sell tired properties. Now, can you imagine that property has been on the market for two years? For two years, they've been advertising it. Remember, if the market, if the purchase price is circa 100 grand, if they're going to be making 2%, which is 2,000, out of that 2,000 pound, they're going to be advertising. Now, how much do you reckon they've actually spent 
on advertising that property. Now, right, uh, Zo uh, right move and Zoopla, et cetera, are all expensive pool tools. You know, they've been probably advertising in the paper and all kinds of stuff. That's all coming out of their margin. Now, if you came in with a fresh approach and said, guys, I can help. Uh, I can help you sell, potentially sell this, but I need some form of exclusivity. You still make your money off the seller. We make our money off the buyer. How does that sound? They're going to say, you know what, to be fair, Yusuf, fantastic. You know, as long as you can, if you can sell this, we're not doing any work. We're still making money off the seller. You're making your money off the buyer. Why wouldn't it work? So Yusuf says, how do you find their name on land registry as the address isn't on right move? So you would have to make some calls, Yusuf, to potentially find the address. Potentially, you may have to drive in the area if, if that's local to you. I'm not suggesting that you drive up and down Manchester. You know, you can literally pick it up. You can use Google Earth, use Google Maps to find the address uh, for argument's sake of next door. Let's just give you an example. Of next door has got a bin out and it's number 33. It can only be 35. Or 31 can't it so again you that's where you just do a little bit of research just it doesn't take long now the three-step system to sourcing success with estate agents tell the estate agents what you're looking for you can buy trade the deals that you say you will and watch them send you more deals now now you don't go to a estate agent and say you know what, guys I can help sell all this and they say, yeah, great, okay, fantastic. And as a result, they start giving you everything because you sell nothing. Because they think, this guy talked a good game and he's doing nothing. Start with one property. Go in and say, guys, okay, I've seen this property. I understand that it's been on for a short while. Now the reason why I'm contacting you is very simple. It's the fact that I believe I might have an investor for this. But as a result, I need to make sure that we're, we're both kind of singing along the same hymn sheet. You know, I've got a buyer, you've got a seller. How about if we put them together? I make my money off the buyer, you make your money off the seller. And as a result, you've sold your property. The vendor will want to know who I am. I'll just put the buyer in front of you and you take them through the name of normal procedure. Um, so let's keep moving on. So I'll go through that process shortly again, Ugo. So Ugo says, can you go through that process again? Um, okay, so Zishan says, shall we call the agent and ask for the door number? No, because let's face it, as soon as you call up Zishan, if you if you call up uh, that bridge foot agent and you go, hi, uh, my name is Zishan, I understand that you've got property for sale, um, do you mind if I have the door number? They may give it you once or twice. After that, they'll think that you're going to poach the vendor and as a result, they'll say, sorry, not giving it to you. Unless you're interested in the property, you book a viewing and we'll give it you then. Um, but chances are they won't give you, they'll probably give you a one or two, but not after that. So the five different types of deals, you can do buy to let, you can do rent to rent, you can do lease options, you can do HMO, you can do land, you can do all kinds of, I could add service accommodation, you can do all kinds of stuff in there. Now step two is to package it. So step one is to source it, step two is to package it. So once you've got yourself through the door and the agent has said, you know what, okay, let's start working together, you look at the property. And you may look at a property in a different, completely different light as to what the agent, remember the agent has just seen a two-bedroom mid, uh, two mid-terrace house as a two-bed mid-terrace house. You may look at this as a deal trader and you think, hang on, in actual fact, I might be able to put a different spin on this. So most people struggle or fail to sell deals because they're only looking for discounted property. However, when you meet a homeowner, you need to solve their property problem, not their, not buy their house at a discount. So do you get that? We're not there to go in straight away and say, okay, your house is 100 grand, I'm offering you 65 grand. They're gonna say, guys, there's a door, don't let it hit you on the way out. I've been thrown out of so many properties. Very early on in my journey, I was that one trick pony. I would walk in, I'd say your house is worth 100 grand. If you want to sell it to me, I'll offer you trade value at 70 to 75 grand. I got thrown out to so many properties. Naivety cost me millions of pounds. Now, one thing I'm saying to you, don't say the same mistake. If I knew then what I know now, I'd like to think I would have been hundreds of millions of pounds. So, you know that you can trade up to five deals. This frees you from 
becoming the below market value one trick pony so that you can help the owner. So give me an example. If the house is not selling and you're understanding the pain and the motivation, you structure it from instead of being a sell, potentially to become a lease option, to become a rent to rent deal, to potentially do the JV with the vendor. There's so many ways that you can structure a deal. Now, give me an example. I've got a property that we're about to package or we're going about to sell this week. When I first started speaking to the vendor, he goes, Arsh, I'm only after a straightforward sale. I thought, okay, it's interesting, but it doesn't seem like a great deal. And uh, we started speaking, I've been speaking to him, he goes, Arsh, he goes, you sure you can't find a buyer for this property? I said, I said, John, what are you after for it? I just can't see an angle with it. And he goes, so what do you propose? And I said, well, if you allow me to become a little bit creative with my approach with your property, I think there is a way around it. So he's got a shop and he's got a flat and it's in Liverpool. Now, the, he's got planning permission for it to become a five-bed HMO. And he does want £100,000 for it. He's not budging off the £100,000 mark. I said, OK, that's fine. I said, but in order for me to put it out, the way that I would want to structure it is so that I would want to do almost like a lease option on it for a short period of time because the property in itself is a mortgageable, which makes it a little bit more undesirable and it narrows down the market, the people that you can sell it to. As a result, we've now structured it where he's given us a 12-month lease option on it. In that process, someone could come in, control it, get the property up to HMO standard, get it generating within the 12 months, and someone can then buy it with its traditional method of mortgage, as opposed to having to go through bridging or cash purchase, which makes it open, opens it out massively. So if you are looking in Liverpool, you want a lease option where it's got a shop and a flat, and you're going to be paying the landlord five hundred pounds a month. Give me a shout, and uh, we can give you a, we can give you a first heads up on that. I knew I mentioned pain and motivation here somewhere. The secret to solving the problem or the owner's problem is to understand their pain and motivation. Now, going back to my example just in Liverpool, when we started to talk about it, he goes, "Oh, she goes. The reason why I'm pushing you to try and get this." Uh, to get this sold is because I want to go away from the middle of December. Uh, I want to go to Thailand for near enough three to six months. And I said, okay, now we get to the bottom. And now we're understanding where we're going. It goes, so it goes, really, I don't want to leave here knowing that the property is not sold. So now we understand what they want to achieve. And now we know what's stopping them from having it. And they're the two questions that are the key to your deal trading success. Pain and motivation, understanding what they're looking to achieve, understanding what's stopping them from having it. Uh, okay, so oh, so Ruth has come in with a question. Uh, okay. Okay, Ruth, I'll answer your question. It's very specific. She goes, Ash reviewed the property on Saturday. It's a development project. Planning permission for some flats. We didn't have business cards, but sent an introduction email. The estate agent's not come back. How do you turn this around? Now, uh, one thing that you should do, so you bear in mind, you viewed it on Saturday. Estate agents only work half day Saturday. They don't work Sundays. So chances are they may be calling you tomorrow. So don't panic yet. If they haven't called you by the end of play tomorrow, first thing that I would do on Tuesday morning is pick up the phone and say, hi guys, yeah, it's Ruth. You may remember that we, we viewed the property on Saturday. Just wanted to get some feedback. What were your thoughts? You know, uh, we're still keen on the property. And as a result, they may turn around and say, Ruth, okay, we didn't like the fact that you didn't have a business card. So, well, God, sorry, apologies. It was Saturday morning. I rushed out to get to the viewing. You know, uh, I have got business cards if, if that's what makes you feel better. And as a result of not having the business card, that's why I followed up immediately with a an email. And that will bring it back online. So don't panic, Ruth. It's too... You know, remember, not everyone works the weekend. Not all as crazy as me and you. So, going back, you're going to make the landlord or homeowner want to sell you their house. All you have to do is wrap the solution around this specific problem. And remember, you as the deal trader or the deal sourcer, remember, you're not offering. You're not offering to go in and buy it off them for a cash offer completely in seven days and all that malarkey. What you're doing is you're you're not going to, one, one thing that you're doing is you're trying to save your face by saying we've got someone else that will be interested in the property. 
So you don't want to go and say you can buy the house and complete it within seven days so they don't so they don't lose their dream house. See, the problem that you got is that if you go in and you make all kinds of promises and you don't deliver, you're gonna come across, you're gonna get caught in some fire. You are doing much more than simply buying their house. You are giving the owner what the owner actually cares about is that you're helping them buy their dream house. Does that make sense? So if you're saying that I've got potentially someone that can buy it, the cost or the reason for them to move is greater than the financial solution. Now, when we're talking about landlords and we're talking about investors, if you offer the landlord a guaranteed income for the next seven years, which is then known as a rent to rent or lease option, this solves their immediate problem and gives them peace of mind for the future. So as a result, can you see how we've started to package it in different ways and we started to come up with creative solutions? Now, step three is the most important. Well, when I say step three, this is the part that I like the best because this is my favorite step for obvious reasons. Getting to this point means that you've succeeded with the other two steps. But don't take your eye off the ball just yet because this is when it matters the most. Just because you've got a great deal and an audience of buyers doesn't mean that you're going to sell it easily. You still have to show your audience why you should buy your deal. Your email has to give a prospective buyer everything they need to make an informed decision about your deal. Now, there's a step, 10 step process that I use every day. Now, for, for the guys that are listening on this webinar, now, do you receive the emails that we put out every day? Would you agree that they're quite informative? They're quite educational. You know, they're very detail to the point showing you what the property is what it can become how much it's going to cost to get involved and everything associated with it would you agree with that now there's 10 actual steps that we put in there so stuff like we give you the location we give you the pictures the condition of the property we show you what the market value is we provide comparables and proof of that we show you what the purchase price is we tell you approximately what the discount is we show we we're very upfront with the sourcing fee we show you what the vision for the property is. We show you what the vision and the forecast is for the cash flow. We tell you exactly what's total required to purchase, and we give you the action, uh, the call to action. Does that so straight away? And it's uh, ten. Okay, so Sean, I understand that you've got a few questions that are coming through. If you hold off until the end of the webinar, I'll go through them all with you. Is that okay? So that's the 10 steps that I use. So when you're putting an advert together and you're trying to sell it to one of the investors, you're going to step back and think, okay, as an investor, what would I be looking for from an advert? If you want me to part money, part with some money for this deal, what are the things that I should be looking at? And, you know, I get so many people copy my approach into selling deals. And, you know, I have to say to them, guys, go off and find your own approach. Now, there is a shortcut to success. You can get started faster. You can reduce your three-step process to just one so that you have less to learn and focus so you can profit faster. And this is when you JV with me. When I say you JV with me, I'm going to talk to you about You find the deal and I'll sell it for you. If you source deals through estate agents, then it's free to get started and you don't need to negotiate with the owner. Does that make sense? I'll walk you through exactly how I put the persuasive email broadcast to immediately sell your deal so you can confidently do this in the future. And I'll sell your deal to my database in less than a day. And this really is the fastest and easiest way to make property cash flow. Now, here's, I'm just then gonna introduce, so uh, here, uh, 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 right, okay, so a couple of questions that are coming through. Here's a lady called Sarah. Now, Sarah's based in Scotland, so she goes, I th I th it's easy to think that it's impossible to find below market value deals in Scotland because of the closed bidding system for buying a house. That's definitely what held me back from taking action for the first few months. Once I decided to give it a try, I was amazed at what was possible. I made six grand from my first deal. She agreed a purchase price of £65,000 on a three-bedroom terraced house with a market value of around £140,000. The deal was sold within a day to Arsh's Investor Database. This made the deal trading process much easier, as I always knew there's a guaranteed way to trade the deal for a healthy fee. Now that I've got the proof that the system works in Scotland, I'm going to make deal, deal trading the focus, and it's so lucrative. So that's Sarah Park. She's based in Glasgow. And admittedly, when Sarah bought me this property, I thought, oof, okay, this is going to be a little tough. I didn't really realise how strong 
the market is in Glasgow. So in Scotland, so the property that she bought, it was one of a renovation project. And we had one of our Chinese investors that bought it and uh, refurbed it and traded it. Now, guy that you see on the right hand side, now this, uh, sorry, uh, guy that you see here is a chap called Russell Bokes. I do loads with Russell. Uh, so, R showed me how to use a variety of online tools to build a property business that I can run anywhere from Marbella or anywhere in the world. Now, Russell is actually based in Marbella. All my deals have been sourced to auction and I've been sold to Arsh's investor database. Selling to Arsh's database made the deal trading process quick and easy. I'm amazed that in six weeks, I've gone from knowing nothing deal trading to already selling three deals and making nine grand in fees, all whilst living in Marbella. And he believes it's the ultimate property strategy. And it's been done from anywhere in the world and can be stopped at any time. If you really want to build a deal trading business, all you need to do is follow the system and you will succeed. And that's Russell from Marbella. And now this young lady, she's a young lady. So her name's Sandy Ben, she's based in Derby. So she's been working, uh, when I started working with Arsh, had no previous property experience. Arsh explained different strategies to me and I decided on deal trading because I could get started without any money. So she's traded three deals in two months, made 22 grand in sorting fees. This is amazing. And that's Sandy Baines from Derby. So don't judge me on my success because you could say that I'm a bit of a veteran at it. Judge me on the success of my students. Judge me on my ability to help you transform the quality of your life with property cash flow. You see the deals come to you every week. You see the deals. Uh, you see the deals that come to you every. Uh, you see the deals that come to you every day on email. So I am running something called the Deal Trading Bootcamp. So if you'd like to invest in property and you don't think you can because you don't have a deposit or previous experience, then I'd like to tell you, I'd love to tell you about the Deal Trading Bootcamp. It's a two-day workshop which removes both of the problems from your property journey and gives you the skills and confidence to start making property cash flow from the very next day. So here's what you're going to learn on the workshop. 21 different ways to source deals. Five different types of deals you can trade. We're going to be looking at the deal analysis for the discount, cash flow, and development, or all three. We'll be showing you the negotiation secrets to effortlessly create a win-win. Ten ways to build an audience so that you can create your own database to sell your deals to. And the 10-step persuasion process to instantly sell your deals. Plus, you get all the contracts, all the exclusivity agreements, all the lockout agreements, all the deal analyzers. And I don't, well, I say scripts, but I don't use a script. I give you points as to how you steer the direction of the conversation to get you started the very next day, plus a recording of the entire event. And here's the workshop broken into eight sections. We look at the overview. We look at the economics. We look at the analysis. We look at the types of deals. We look at the sourcing strategies. We look at the negotiation secrets. We look at the list building process and we look at the saleability and the sale process. Now, I understand that not everyone can attend events in person. You know, life gets in the way, family, kids, babysitting, etc. But I want everyone to get involved. So therefore, there are multiple ways to get multiple ways to get involved. So you can attend in person and take advantage of the networking opportunity. You can live stream from the comfort of your own home, or you could purchase the recordings which all come with the associated documents. And again, for your own resources, what we actually give you is the BMV deal anal analysis spreadsheet. We give you the rent to rent deal analysis spreadsheet, we give you the lease option deal analysis spreadsheet, we give you the HMO deal analysis spreadsheet, we give you the lockout agreement, the property introduction agreement, the proven template, uh, leaflet templates if you want to send out leaflets, proven posters if you want to put posters out, the letter sequences for, uh, for sale buyers, proven newspaper leaflets and generation adverts, and the ultimate vendor questions. And finally, the three main blueprints that I consult every day. So I've got three flow charts that I use on a day-to-day -day basis showing you how to, you know, flow chart is pretty much taking you step-by-step -step process how to deal with agents and vendors, how to deal with rent to rent, how to deal with other sources and other people packaging deals. 
Now, what will this do for you? It will give you in, allow you to enjoy quick results with every action you take as a positive step forward to agreeing and selling a lucrative deal, which is unbelievably easy to do when you follow a proven system. Watch your income soar as you easily trade multiple deals and you won't suffer through the frustrations of being that one trick pony that sources struggle to find below market value deals. When you trade five different deal types, then you'll never be short of opportunities. And I'll be showing you, this is the most important thing, how to see the potential in every opportunity so that it allows you to monetize every deal that you look at using the one, using the three things, discount, income, and development potential. And how to confidently negotiate a win-win for you and the homeowner or the agent as you present a quick solution to their problem that makes them want to sell you their property. And this guarantees you never waste an opportunity. And I'll be allowing you to sell, uh, sell your deals in a day by, I'll be showing you how to build your own database on a shoestring budget. And also be showing you that if you want to profit from using baby steps, how you can JB with me, you find the deal and I'll sell it for you. Like this, you have less to learn less to focus on so you can profit faster. So moving on. So what I'm after is I'm after success stories. So I want testimonials. So stories that will inspire other people with no previous property experience to transform their life and property cash flow. So if you're willing to share your property success in a written or video testimonial, now I'm gonna allow you to attend the workshop for 997. We normally charge £2,000 for the workshop. So you're going to save yourself a grand if you're willing to do a testimonial. So let's get let's get moving on. The session is designed to push you out, to, uh, push you through your comfort zone. The session is designed to help you succeed faster. The session is designed to give you deal flow to achieve your cash flow goals. Just so you know, guys, we're going to be doing a Q&A session shortly. Uh, okay, so the, it is, sorry, it's not 16th to 17th of September. I've made a real mess there. It's the 17th and 18th of November. The price of it is 997 per person. And the venue is the Jury's Inn Hotel, which is Broad Street. And the times are 9 to 5. And if you want to know a little bit more about it, you go to bit.ly forward slash deal trading 2018. Now, the one thing that I always offer is I always offer a 100% um, money back guarantee. So if you buy the course, you risk nothing because you're covered by my 100% money back guarantee. Here's how it works. You attend the first day of the course, and if you're not completely satisfied, all you have to do is say so, and I'll give you a full refund. Uh, so it is Saturday the 17th and Sunday the 18th of November, and you get it at a discount, the testimonial discount at 997, at no risk because you're covered by the 100% money back guarantee. Okay, so have you ever been given a book that you haven't read? What makes you think that this would be any different if I gave it you for free? So some people will, I guarantee some people will come to it and say, Ash, oh, okay, um, can I come on the workshop and I'm going to pay for it as my first deal? Now, I always say to them, do you ever go to Asda and say, I'll tell you what, can I borrow this can of beans, can I eat it and then I'll come and pay for it after? Because my question is, are you really going to make a commitment to yourself if, you, if you're giving it for free? Absolutely not. So, you know, one thing I will say is that if you can, please refrain from asking me the question. Knowledge is only 50% of the success equation. The other 50% is taking action. It's getting out of you, getting you out of your comfort zone. It's not giving up. I can only take you 50% of the way I can take you to the water. You're the one that has to drink it. So apologies for spilling, you know, making it sound very, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be contradicting or contrasending. So you can source property across the entire country from the comfort of your own sofa. What makes you think you can't source property just because it's a couple of hours drive away? Remember, when you source deals through estate agents and auctions, you don't need to view the property yourself. When you source five deal, types of deals, 
you'll see daily the opportunities in every town or city. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to train you to start looking things in, looking at things in a completely different way that you would have looked at previously. So can ordinary people succeed? Here's a guy called Nick Swells. Deal trading is a perfect strategy for him because he's able to keep the best deals for himself and monetize the ones that are out of his area. Now, remember, when you're deal sourcing, if there's something that you like, you keep it for yourself. You know, for argument's sake, if it's a rent-to-rent -rent deal, you keep it for yourself. If it's not for you, you sell it and you monetize it. And remember, if you can't travel for whatever reason, join me from the comfort of your own home where you can watch the live stream of the whole event, you can ask questions throughout the chat in the chat box throughout the whole day, and I'll answer them throughout the day. The workshop is the 17th and 18th of November. And it is 997 per person. But what I will do, and I'm going to throw this out there, if you have got a business partner, I will allow you to bring them for free. So that's 997 for two people. It's at the Jury's Inn Hotel on Broad Street in Birmingham. And the time's are 9 to 5 p.m. on both days. Right, let's go. Uh, this is all boring. When I say boring stuff, it's not boring stuff, but I want to make sure that we get lots of time for Q&A. So you don't need any previous experience. All you need is a proven system with consistent action. And you can sacrifice just one day from your weekend to your property business, then you will consistently trade one deal a month, which will make you approximately 60 grand cash flow based on the fact of each deal being five grand each. Plus, you will have a buyer for the deal when you JV with me, which means that all you have to do is source it and let me take care of the rest for you. Remember, there's no tenants, no management or properties to deal with. So if you mess up on one deal, don't worry about it because you'll learn from the experience and move on to the next one. You won't lose money by making a mistake. You will lose money by being paralyzed by fear and you will only lose money by not taking any action. Remember, it's not costing you anything to get involved into the property. You're not putting a deposit down you're not putting, you know, you're not doing a refurb. You're not, you're not dealing with solicitors. You're not dealing with mortgage companies. So, some people say, but Arsha, I can't negotiate with vendors. Is it can't or you don't want to? I'll show you exactly how to do this on the deal trading big camp. We'll practice it on the course so that when you do it for the first time, or when you do it for real the first time, it'll actually be your ninth or tenth time. So we do lots of breakout sessions so that we'll teach you how to negotiate. I'll even be making calls live with you on the workshop. All you have to do is source the deals through estate agents. I'll show you exactly what you need to do to succeed. But you have to be willing to try. So finally, if you're smart, hungry and motivated, then this is definitely for you. If you want property cash flow to transform the quality of your life, then this is for you. If you're looking for the fastest way to get involved in property and turn hard work into cash, this is for you. And the weekend is the 17th and 18th of November. And remember the three ways to get involved. So attending in live person, you can live stream from the comfort of your own home, or you can purchase the recordings that will all come with associated documents. So my question is, with all the support that I'm going to provide you with all the after support, so I put you into a WhatsApp group, which is uh, directly with me and as well as the all the workshop that you're going to have and all the documents and all the support thereafter how can you possibly fail and you get to jv with me i only jv with people who come on the deal sourcing workshop so i'm going to move now on to the question so what would stop okay right Right, okay, so straight away, first question. Uh, now's your time to put your questions into the, uh, we've got approximately 15 minutes where you've got question time. So if there's questions that you want to ask, now's the time to ask them. So Rob has asked, he goes, what would stop you from taking the deal yourself? Okay, so Rob, great question. I've been doing property now for approximately 18 years. Are you, I'm, I'm just going to assume that you're saying, what, you know, so let's say that Rob, Bought the deal to me and said, "Well, okay, thank you very much, Rob." And I run off into run off into the wind with Rob Steele. Now, first of all, that will never happen. Uh, I can show you hundreds, if not thousands, uh, people that I've worked with, 
and you'll pretty much you'll find that there'll never be an issue. So for argument's sake, if Rob was to bring a property to me and go, Arsh, okay, here's the property, here's the deal. I will show you when the property deal is going out, who has reserved it, how they've reserved it, and then as a result, we will then need to speak to the agent to ensure that it's been reserved, and they will see there's a whole level of transparency so that you see exactly where we are in that process. If you're saying, well, what would stop you from taking the deal for yourself? Now, Rob, one thing I would say is that if you're looking to buy for yourself, I would say fair play to you because, you know, the deal sourcing, just so that you know, last year in 2017, I actually, I sourced, I decided to source a load of property in Wolverhampton for myself, but these were deals that I sourced for myself. I actually bought 50. 2018, so far, I bought 15. So the last two years, I've bought 65 properties for my own portfolio. If someone brings it to me and says, Arsh, I've seen a property in, I've seen a property in Wolverhampton and I want to source it. If it's for me, I'll say to you, very straightforward, okay, what are you after for the deal? And if you say I'm after three grand, uh, then yeah, I'll say, okay, on the basis that I think it's a good deal, I will pay you the sourcing fee for the deal. I've got no issue with that. If I think that the property is worth it for me, then that's fine. So Mark Fitzgerald says, if we JV a deal, what is the split in fees? Is it 50-50? That's exactly it, Mark. So Fragment says, so we just so that you know, I only JV with people that come on the boot camp. So if you want to, if you come on the boot camp and you find a deal, then we do a 50-50 split on the fee. So uh Arsh, are the prices for live stream and the video what are the prices for live stream video recording? Charles. They're exactly the same because you're still going to be getting the same level of support. You're going to still be getting all the documentation and everything to go around with it. So you get the recording, you'll get the workshop. Um, so if you live stream, you get the live stream. You also get the recording and all the documents. And if you're attending in person, you get to attend. You also get the recording. And if you're uh, just purchasing the recording, you get the recording and all the documents. Does that make sense? And plus, you get all the uh, all the attention after as well. So, uh, okay, so for BNB deals, does it matter how much the price a vendor is selling the house for, i.e. 400,000 or 500,000? The price is irrelevant, Jerome. Don't get too fixated on price. What someone is after, what they're prepared to accept after you understood the solution are two completely, uh, two completely different things. Does that make sense? Okay, so Pearl says, and this is a good question. One thing I forgot to mention there. She goes, do you need to be compliant with any regulator? Yes. There are certain steps of compliance that you require, and that is definitely part of the workshop that we cover. So, the, you know, for argument's sake, you need to be part of certain trade bodies, uh, certain trade bodies, and you need to have some form of insurances to to be a a, a compliant uh, deal sourcer and deal packager. So, these are things that we'll be covering on the workshop. So, you need to have some form of insurance. You know, you need to be registered with HMRC as a deal packager. Uh, you need to be part either the PRS or the, uh, the property ombudsman scheme. So the okay. So there are a couple of things. So okay. So Salil has asked a question. Uh, okay. So how is your course different from others with whom you have jointly presented? With whom you have jointly presented? Okay. So Salil, I'm the only person I know of that would allow you to come on a workshop and also JV and sell their deals to my database. There's no one else in the industry that I know that has got a database of my size. So we've got approximately 103,000 people on our database. And I don't know anyone that is doing it to the scale that I'm doing that. There are a few people that have a go, you know, admittedly. A few people that I'm going to go, and there's some people, there's lots of people running workshops, admittedly. How many of those will you get the kind of after support? Remember, it's in my and your best interest to get you deals because if we're JBing on them and we're doing a 50 50 split on them, we've now both got a vested interest to get your deals over the line as quickly as possible. Now, if you go on a normal workshop and after the weekend, You've got no form of support, yeah. You know, they don't care whether you do one deal, five deals, ten deals, or hundred deals, because if they're not JVing with you, as far as they're concerned, it's not 
it's not in their interest, but it will be my personal interest to to make sure that deals happen to get over the line. So Michael Dean said, yeah, well, Michael, I can, uh, Michael's traded seven deals within a very short space of time. Okay, so is there an additional course with an option to work as a mentor with you to expedite the learning to expedite the learning process? So I do run, you know, admittedly, I do run um, mentorship groups and stuff like that. And the one the which is I'm famous for is one called the Elite Property Tribe. And you can you can go and have a look at the Elite Property Tribe at Code UK. It doesn't actually open up until Feb. So I only take it open it twice a year, February and June, um, which is a lot more money than 997. But if that's of interest to you, I'm more than happy for you to have a chat with me. So Andrew says, Will I be running this another time? This is the first time that I've ran this this year, Andrew. Uh, and you know, admittedly, time's a big thing for me. So I try not to spend two every weekend running workshops and stuff like that. So um, I haven't run. Uh, I haven't run. I, I've got no other dates yet. So the one thing I would say is that if you are interested, if you can't make it in person, you can uh, again acquire or buy the recording and also still get the same level of after support. So if there are questions that feel like that you didn't, or you weren't 100% clear on on the recording, I'm happy for you to pick up the phone or you know get involved on the WhatsApp group and I can have a chat with you. Okay, so, so uh, Mark says, sorry, cut off, how long do you get this support for? Is it as long as you trade deals together? That's exactly it, Mark. So I'm happy to work with you guys. So I've got this one guy called Atti that I'm currently working with. He came on the workshop last year. Uh, he came on the workshop last year and we're still doing deals together. Okay, so, um, Let's get let's get let's get moving on. Okay, so right. If I can't, uh, so Salil said, if I can't get someone to join me, can you offer it me for five hundred pounds? Unfortunately, Salil, no. Great, great try. But the person that you just so that you know, Salil, I'm conscious of the fact that you've just mentioned that to me. That that deal of bringing a business partner has to be a valid business partner or a marital partner. We can't just go on Facebook and say, oh, Arsh, Arsh is offering a deal for two, four thousand pounds. They have to be your business partner. Okay, so um, question, so a deal says, is there ongoing uh, access or support from Arsh, either by phone or is there a Facebook community? Yes, we've got a Facebook community group, which is a closed group again, uh, which is a closed group again, uh, which you've got access to support as well. Okay, so someone says, have you ever had any comebacks on the deal you've sold, i.e. it hasn't panned out as you described in the deal package? Just so that you know, guys, I will only put stuff out if I believe that the deal is actually worthy. So, you know, if I would say, if someone says that a deal is worth 120000 and when I do my research, it's only worth 100000 that deal's not going to go out. Unless I'm 100% happy with it, it's not going out. We'll only put it out on the merits that I've seen it, and I think... I've seen the statistics, I've seen all the evidence to confirm everything. So in that respect, yeah, you know, in that respect, if someone comes and says, well, I'll oh, show sure, I've had it at rent to rent and it hasn't worked, well, we don't get we don't get comebacks like that because we've done all our checks beforehand. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so Stuart says, hi Arsh, it's the same price if you can't attend and just purchase the recording rather than attend in person. Stuart, the price is exactly the same, just purely because my friend. Uh, you get the level of support after, you get the documentation beforehand, and you are getting exactly the same experience as if you were in the room. So, uh, okay, so, so d -d 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 okay, so, uh, Silio says, I'm uh, I'm keen on inquiring, uh, on acquiring a HMO and SA around the northwest London. Your focus has been outside M25. Question, why aren't you focusing in London or Greater London? Now, just so that you know, God, uh, just so that you know, Salil, you know, if you were to come on the workshop, I'd be telling you, if you were to say, if you were to say, well, Ash, I need to focus on the M25, I'll be showing you exactly what you need to be doing so that you can focus on that area and you can go off and acquire your own opportunity. Does that make sense? So, okay, so uh, how long, so Don says, how long will the recording be available after uh, the event? Well, I send you the recording and then you've got the opportunity. It stays with you for as long as you want it. So you can download it or you can watch it as many times. So I put it into a cloud where you have access to it for as long as you want it for. 
So, uh, okay. What does Arsh charge per deal if Jamie? So if the if deal, say, is four grand and the deal sold to one of his investors, would you charge or what uh, What do I get net? So let's say if the fee is four grand, so we do a 50-50 split on the four grand, so it's 2,000 each. Um, okay, what percentage of deals get sold? What is your conversion rate? Surely not every deal gets sold. Now that's a great question. That's a great question. On average, uh, our success rate is around between 85 and 90 percent. So not every deal gets sold, admittedly, but a very high percentage of them do. And the reason why a very high percentage, you've got to remember how many deals I see in a day. Remember, you see two go out on email a day. I probably see about 10. The other eight haven't cut it. So as a result, I'm very, um, I'm very, very, um strict on the criteria so if something comes in and there's information missing or there's this missing or that missing it's not going to go i'm very strict in my approach in respect of that if it hasn't got all the bits that needs in order for a buyer to look at it and say you know what i i instantly like it and i want it it's not going out so John says, how long after the event will the video be available to purchase so John you'd have to purchase it beforehand and then the, uh, you'd, so for argument's sake, if you were to buy the event today, uh, as soon as the event happens on 17th and 18th of October, generally it's about two days after the event, you will get access to the recording, but you'll be in a WhatsApp group pretty much straight away. Okay, so uh, Adil says, sounds fair, but how could I build my own database of investors? Once sold to Arsh's investor, does he remain Arsh's exclusive team? Yes, he does. Just so that you know, I'm not here to offload my database onto other people. That database is worth millions, tens of millions of pounds to me, and has made me tens of millions of pounds. So I will show you how to build your own database. And if you want to offer your own deals to your own database, that's fantastic, and I wish you every success. If you want to sell it to my database, I will be closely guarding my database. So that in that respect, you look out in the same respect, you make sure that the, the agent is on board, I make sure that the buyer buys. Does that make sense? So Jane says, hi Ash, what does JV you mean? What is the percentage ratio on the split on the sourcing fee? It's 50-50, Jane. So again, going back to the example, of if you if we get a deal and the fee is 4,000 pounds, we do a 50-50 on that. So we, we make two grand each, yeah? So, but you gotta remember that you, both of us are gonna pull our part. So both of us are going to do our part. So you've got to make sure that you've got a deal. You've got to make sure that you, we've got it in a format which is ready to go. I then put it out. I then field the calls. I then have a look to make sure who's the correct investor for it. We arrange the viewing. We get them to get the feedback as a result. We then start moving it forward. We instruct the solicitors. Um, okay, so Victor says, Ash, will the video uh, recording be a visual one or audio one? So we give you both. We give you the video and audio because we appreciate that there's certain people learn in different ways so you get both so uh okay so chris has said what who decides the sourcing fee so chris so that uh, generally speaking i get lots of people and they come to me and say oh i think this is worth five grand and i look at it i said it's not worth five grand you know at best case scenario it's worth two to three thousand three being absolutely generous so you know i look at all different kinds of things so has he got an app has it got a has it got an angle where it's below market value? Has it got an angle where there's massive amount of cash flow? Is it a different angle where someone can add value? And that's only when I'll start to look at it and think, well, this is the cash flow. So it is a deal by deal approach and it is a very individual approach. Uh, okay, so um so Harsh, I presume you can JV with you regardless of whether you attend or obtain recording. Harsh, unfortunately, as I said, the JV is only if you attend the workshop or obtain the recording. So otherwise, you know, with all due respect, I could be JVing with people left, right, Tom, Dick and Harry. And uh, I try and keep it. And more important, the reason why I do it, I do it only to workshop members is because I teach you the correct method of sourcing. I teach you the correct method of putting it together. And that way I have some form of control over the quality that comes in. 
and so that I'm not spending loads of time filtering the crap, if I'm putting it bluntly. So no, it is not for general public and only available to those that come on the workshop. So uh, okay, so okay, so our oh, hi Ash, can the 50-50 be reviewed once certain targets are hit? Also, how do we get experience and how to close the deal at the back end with the investors if Ash is dealing with them? Can we at least be party to these negotiations and negotiate uh, discussion and negotiation only to learn and um, observe? So absolutely a deal. You won't get the investor's phone number and you won't be meeting the investor. Uh, and the reason being is that I'm protecting my interest. Pretty much like if I was to say a deal, okay, give me the vendor's phone number and let me go and speak to them direct. You think, well, hang on, uh, Ash, if I give you the vendor's phone number, are you going to run off with them? But, you know, more importantly, I'm going to make sure that the investors that are there, that are working with me on a day by day basis, that we don't lose them as a business, as a client of ours. Okay, so Victor said we'll be able to listen to this webinar again. Potentially, Victor, uh, I'll check to see if it's been recorded after. Okay, Jane says, thanks, Ash. Is it best we set up a limited company? Well, if you're, if you're going to start trading, then I would suggest that you set up a limited company because limited, uh, you know, just so that you know, um, it's always best to set up a limited company because it get, you know, it gives it provides you the best tax returns. Okay. A deal says on the boot camp, how much focus is there on rent to rent as well as deal packaging? How do we get access to Arsh's database and how is it paid for? I.e., uh, does Arsh take a percentage? So we've, I think we've already clarified that. There is the focus is all about deal sourcing. So showing you how to deal source and how to deal package. You know, so we're not going to focus too much. Well, when we say rent to rent, we'll be showing you how to focus and identify rent to rent because that's one of the strategies. It's not going to be a whole weekend of rent to rent because I've just run a whole weekend on rent to rent last weekend. So, um, so in that respect, yes, we are teaching you how to source and how to package and how to sell. Right, I think I've pretty much answered. Every, well, everything, if not majority of questions, and we have hit the nine o'clock mark. So hopefully you've enjoyed. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed um, the webinar. Um, the one thing I always say at the end of every session was well, thank you for uh, taking the time to learn how you can replace your property cash flow within a few months without deposit, without any of your own savings, without any previous property experience, whilst juggling a demanding full-time job when you trade deals. Hope you can now see that anyone can get quick results when they follow proven strategy with consistent action. And if you've still got questions, now uh, someone's just said that they've just joined. Uh, someone says that they've just joined. If you've got any questions or if you want to get access to, um, if you want to get access to the uh, session, because if you have just joined, give me a shout. If you so, Mr. Khan, if you want to, uh, drop me a line tomorrow, I'll see if I can get you a link to it so you can watch it. Adil says, thanks Ash, will you be training on sourcing investors and the closing process? Yes, I will be showing you how you can build your own database and how to approach them and how to sell to them, so yes. Um, so there's there's lots and lots of stuff that we cover over the, remember you've got two whole days and it's going to be covered by me directly, so you're not, you're not learning from anyone else. And if you want to have a chat, if you want to have a chat about anything, you've got my direct mobile number there, which I don't believe many of the trainers give out their personal mobile numbers. If you want to have a chat, feel free to email me, have a conversation with me, and let's see what we can do. And more importantly, I look forward to seeing you on the workshop on the 17th and 18th of November 2018. On that note, guys, take care. Have a lovely weekend and rest of the week. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.